Hi, I'm pastelist Avon Waters, and today, if you've been following my videos, you can see I'm outside. I'm not in the studio. Have you ever been outside and you wish that you could paint something? And you take a photograph and you can, yeah, you can take that back, but you'd like to sit outside, enjoy the outside, but not maybe paint outside. Plein air painters, they love to paint outside. I used to be a plein air painter, but I found that I like to spend a little less time outside and more time doing art in the studio. So today, I am going to show you how, when you see something you want to paint outside, how to simplify those forms, edit it down, something you can take back to the studio and paint from. I've traveled out to some of the lakes that are within an hour or two of my home, and I am looking for things to paint. So I'm out doing some photography but I'm also doing some drawing. You can see that we've got all sorts of grasses. There are uh, cattails, there are grasses with neat reflections in the water. I'm out here with my friend and fellow artist, Rick Wilson. He's a nationally known artist. He shows all over the state of Indiana, but travels all over the country and has been an instructor with Plein Air Magazine. We have found many different things that we want to photograph, but I'm all going to show you how I'm going to select one of these images and simplify it so that I just get the large shapes. So here's the scene that I'm going to simplify, and you can see if you squint down some large shapes. So the first thing we have to do is we have to decide what is going to be the darkest area, what's going to be the lightest area, and put it in small images. First of all, you need to find some sort of drawing kit that you can take out into the field with you. Uh, this particular kit is by Derwent, but it's a neat thing. You've got your uh, pencils, erasers, uh, it protects the lead somewhat down in here. It folds up. Like I said, it's Derwent. It folds up. It's nice and compact. When you open it up, you fold the pages back like that. And you've got your pencils on one side. You've got a nice drawing surface on the other side. So I like to do four to six. Sometimes if they're larger, I'll just do two large sketches. But that's what I'm going to use today to simplify this outdoor scene. So whether it's this kit by Derwent or there's a lot of other drawing kits that are available through the uh, art supply houses like Blick, Jerry's, and Artorama, um, Utec. So get you one of these and then you're ready to start drawing. Okay, uh, typically I probably for this demonstration will only show you... Uh, two, three of these drawings, I might do four, but typically I'll do somewhere between three and six drawings like this. And I usually like to try to do something that uh, the very first, I usually like the very first one to be somewhat representative of the scene I'm looking at. So here we've got the water, and I want to get that in there. It's a little a little high in this one and we've got some of the bases of the trees leaving some bright green in this area here so what I'm trying to do here is I've got a nice mass I squint and I've got a nice mass of dark area over here it's a bunch of trees I'm not concerned about how many I'm not concerned other than it's just a dark mass at this particular point so get your squinting eyes together and squint and figure out what your darks and lights are like I said with an eraser I can come in here and I can create that highlight of the water going across this bottom third and that's what attracted me to this scene is you know Anybody that's been watching my channel knows I like these tree screens where, where you've got trees and you're seeing through the shapes of the trees to see what's on the other side. Now there's a little bit of sky up in here, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to mark that out. 
now because I like to put the sky holes in near the end. The same with the painting. What this does is it allows me to see how this is constructed before I start painting. But when I do plein air and I'm outside, I want to try to create something that um, I can take back into the studio. What happens when you do this and you're looking at the scene uh, as opposed to uh, doing this back in the studio, uh, plein air sketching is like plein air painting. You're able to uh, reinforce what you see, your memory, as you start to do these things, begins to reinforce some of that, some of what you see. So when you do get in the studio, uh, you will remember things that are not in your sketches. These sketches are like a shorthand for every individual artist. What I sketch here may not uh, say much to the viewers watching this but what I'm sketching uh, has a meaning to me I know from the my memory and from the values what I'm seeing and so when I get back in the studio and I don't have what I saw here I will be able to do some of the things that um, uh, on canvas, uh, whether it's oil or pastel or any other medium, I'll be able to uh, know from this sketch in my memory things that are not in the sketch, but things also that I have edited out in the... Um, if I'd had a photograph, I would be looking at those details in the photograph as opposed to my memory and relying upon what's in the sketch. So this is about that tree line in the back and uh, this tree and the other trees that are down in this line or this tree screen, they are a lot darker than this set of trees back here. Eventually, I can create and adjust those values. And that's the whole idea of this, is you get a value sketch when you're all done. You actually get three to four value sketches when you're all done. Now there's a couple trees, and even though this is the uh, likeness of where I'm sitting, then what's happening here is this particular tree in this particular scene I know I'm going to have to move it, but I'm going to put it in here. This thing goes right smack dab. It's the largest tree trunk out there. It goes smack dab the middle of this painting. And then there's two little ones on the side of it. Well, now, if I move those later in the, one of the other paintings, then I've got a set of uh, big trunk, little skinny trunks, and kind of a medium-sized trunk on this side. And if I separate those in future paintings or future drawings here, then I actually can use this in another drawing and put it in a better place. So by first drawing it like it is, it trains my eye, trains my muscle memory of how to get some of these things uh, down on whether it's a canvas, whether it's a piece of paper to pastel later. That muscle memory is being created by this act of drawing. And there's another tree over here. Now notice the spacing on these things is almost the same too. So I'm going to definitely want to be uh, making changes as, as I do these other drawings. And I've got some reflections down in this water of the trees on the bank back there. I don't have to put the details. Again, my memory from doing this is what's going to help me in the studio use these drawings. And if I had a photograph, I would be tempted to put many, many more details in here. And we don't want that. We're trying to simplify the scene. And in reality, this tree is a little lighter. And I might come back in here. Might come back in here and uh, make this tree 
a little bit lighter in the center to kind of remind me that I want dark areas around it. I think you can get the idea of what we're trying to do as far as simplify a scene and create something that you can use. And the more you do plein air outside, the more you'll be able to fill in the blanks that your sketch doesn't have. And there's a lot of trees coming in the top, little leaves here and there. I'm not trying to do it photographically. I'm just trying to get the essence of the, the things that make me made me want to stop and look at this particular scene. From this then, I will start doing a second drawing and a third drawing and I'll start moving some of these elements around as I do each of these drawings. So let's get started with that. I haven't done composition on my videos. I've just uh, briefly talked about them. There's a compositional thing called the steel yard. And typically what it is, is it's like a balance beam. You have something short on one side. You have a beam goes across this way. And then you have something bigger and larger on the other side. And then there's some sort of pendulum point that can... Um, traditionally, you'd have, you'd have something down here if you were actually balancing steel in a steel yard but we don't we can have an element that sticks down past this line or and comes up above it we don't need to have it as strict as a steel yard would really be constructed now remember these trees up in here how i said they were in the middle this is what i wanted to do i wanted to come over here and i wanted to put that big tree out in here and I wanted to put some, keep it kind of light. So we'll put some branches back behind here. And then we've got those two other tree elements that come down and they're different sized here. So this becomes much more interesting than that. And you notice the, in the original, we had a tree here. We had big trees right in the middle and we had a tree over on the left and they're all equally spaced. So this solves some of the issues that are in the original scene. And if we just got our paints out and we were outside or we had a photograph, we wouldn't be able to remember maybe that we wanted to move some of these things around. And here's our water. I'm going to put our, our bank in the distance just a little higher because there's reflections of those trees down here. And that will put a light band, keep that light band we had up there. And we'll have our trees, I'm going to make them less even in the background. So this takes on a totally new sort of, of feel than what the first painting did. And it's just an experiment to see, do I want... Do I want this composition? Do I want to use these elements up in here in this manner? And again, if I stop right now, I could paint from this in the studio. I'm trying to take it a little further along so uh, because it is my shorthand, not yours. I want you to be able to see how, as an artist, I'm out here using these elements that are in my original scene and the elements are still there but so many times artists think oh I've got to I've got to make it look like what I'm seeing and you don't uh, you can but in my my thinking is well you know if you want it to look almost like a photograph then why not use a photograph and the top of the trees here I'll I know I don't always put an outline there but this, I think, is going to help you guys see how those trees off in the distance, how I'm handling that. And then we've got those reflections in the water of the trees. So I'll emphasize that, that line at the bank a little bit so you can see those reflections and how I want to include them. Now the sky, 
because this is my center of interest I am artificially darkening the sky a little bit and by using different color hues but in values I can create a similar set of values here a similar set of values here and this will contrast against those two sets of values so that's one possibility and I go on to try to draw other possibilities and I'll show you at least one of those the compositional do design here and here are different this is what nature gave us this is a known design called the steel yard so I'm gonna try something a known design called radiating lines and radiating lines has uh, a lot of people learned it as they studied art and art history. It's like professors will talk about how the artist uses this line or this shape to move your eye towards the center of interest. So the radiating lines is basically that. And we've got our this line of trees here. Now remember, our center of interest is this little strip of water and maybe where some tree trunks go up. And I'm not gonna make the tree trunks straight this time. I don't like the way that came out that way, so I'm gonna use more of a more of this and probably do some erasure there. And I'll put one of those little skinny trees back behind it and another one over here, a little more crooked and a little more character. And it's more like a skeleton that I'll fill in with leaves later so you can see we've got something starting like the steel yard but now by moving supposedly because I've done enough outside drawing sometimes trees are up on kind of a little knoll on a bank so this is our water this is our brush along the edge of the lake and I'm going to put these trees on a little knoll in the water. And this lets me have a leading edge this way, a leading edge this way. Now, if we put some shadows underneath the trees in the distance, and we narrow it down as we go this way, you see we're already starting. And if we had clouds or shapes of leaves, now we're creating this radial design that leads the eye in so nature gave us this we tried one design element known as the steel yard and now I'm doing the radiating lines where we are able to kind of point to things we want the viewer to see so I'll build these trees up a little higher and taper them off this way we can work on maybe some cloud formations. We could also point to this with a bright area in this area here. So let me lighten that up so you can see how if I put a bright area in the clouds or the tree canopy here and moved it off at an angle, I would get these radiating lines pointing towards my center of interest and it all started with what nature gave us this was what drew me this was the reason for the painting and I've still kept that in each of these reconstructions in a different manner if all we did again if all we did was set up our canvas and start painting this rather than do drawings preliminary drawings or we took a photograph it and took it back and painted from the photograph, we'd end up with some version of this. And we got those trees, those big trees, right in the middle of it. And we would be tempted not to make changes because God and nature put that tree there, so I've got to put it there. No, you're an artist. You're not a photographer. You're an artist. Move things around. Make interesting subjects. And that's what outdoor plein air work does for you whether it's painting if I did little studies instead of these um, sketches I would still end up with some of the same uh, results I could uh, I could move those studies and paint them quickly and come up with something of interest 
and I can try a tree at an angle here that's got multiple branches on it and still keep my radiating lines going towards towards that. To me this probably is competing with the shape here and um, if I did this all over again in a in a fourth drawing I would but I tried it and I didn't have to waste a lot of materials to do it so we take that back out and we keep this this background set of trees that will probably be uh, bluish violets going off blue green violets going down we have still got our radiating lines Well, I've come into the studio to wrap up. Working outside and simplifying in studies and small sketches will help you learn to edit out what's not important. I tried to show you my process. It's by no means the only process, but hopefully you got some ideas. If you haven't tried plein air sketches, whether they're color studies or some sort of monotone material whether it's charcoal or graphite like I just used to demonstrate this you'll see how you can quickly over a few months develop a shorthand that will allow you freedom to move things around the key here is to, to make something that is that is satisfying for you so until next time take care and happy painting everybody have fun bye bye